Hi and welcome. My name is Danny Grasso and welcome to my video blog or vlog as it's now being named. Is vlog a thing? Apparently it is. In these short videos, uh, what I want to showcase is some of the new and updated technologies that are coming out of Microsoft. Today, I want to show you the Windows Defender Security Center. Now, don't be put off by the name. I know a lot of you have some serious concerns about anything with Windows Defender in the title, but did you know that Microsoft are now spending $1 billion annually on security? They are also utilizing some amazing data analysis technologies uh, in the Windows Intelligence Security Graph. If you haven't read or you haven't heard about that, then self shameless plug here, head on over to www.jesco.net.au, have a look at the stay in the loop section and check out my lunch and learn episode five on advanced threat protection. And I'll give you a little bit more insight there. But on to today's topic, Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection or WDATP falls into the category of uh, endpoint protection, endpoint detection and response. Um, it's not just on the file system. Uh, so a lot of existing antiviruses target uh, signatures based on file system uh, access. Uh, ATP looks at uh, memory and, the, and uh, attacks and kernel attacks as well. Tightly integrated to Windows 10, there's also support for Windows 7, Windows 8.1 systems and server systems as well. So 2012 R2 Server 2016 operating systems. Support for other OSs like Mac, iOS, Android and Linux is available via third party add-ins. So let's head on over and have a look at the Windows Defender Security Center dashboard. So what you're looking at at the moment is the, the main dashboard or the landing page when you log into what is now called the Windows Defender Security Center. And in here you can see that there's some active alerts, uh, anything active uh, around automated investigation and automated investigation statistics. There's some machines at risk information, users at risk information. And if we scroll down, we can see sensor health and service health. Now. My sensor health is showing zero machines at the moment. Um, I'm using a scoped view here, and that's probably why we're seeing that. Moving on to the, the secure score, this is one of the things that I really like about the way that this information is presented and what Microsoft is doing with the secure score in general, and we're seeing more and more of this. The whole point of the secure score here is for me to be able to quickly identify how I'm tracking in some key specific areas, in, in things that uh, that should be important in my environment. And I, and I can look at those, those things and determine what is, what is important for my environment, uh, what I need to action uh, to improve my, my secure score. And the whole point of improving my secure score is to improve my security in the things that are of most value to me. So we get an overall security score. I don't ever expect that to be perfect because there might be something in my environment that it doesn't make sense to, to do or um, you know, it's, it's a lower priority for me to go ahead and implement. But we can see the secure score over time. And particularly from a WDATP point of view or an endpoint protection point of view, I can see how I'm tracking on each one of those um, security updates, antivirus, EDR, BitLocker, OS platform. For me, I need to focus a little bit on exploit guard. Um, BitLocker is looking a bit lean there at the moment. That's because in, in this environment I'm showing you, I'm running in virtual machines and I don't have BitLocker enabled. Um, but it's a great way, the, the secure score is a great way to get an idea and of where you need to focus efforts to improve security. And I really love that that's tightly integrated to the WDATP console. Threat analytics is one of my favorite areas. And, and the reason why I like threat analytics is it gives me a summary of probably the most um, critical or the, the, uh, the threats or the malware that's out in the wild that is going to be most impacting to my environment. So this is not absolutely everything. You can imagine how long this list would be if it was absolutely uh, like every single malware threat um, available in the world. You wouldn't be able to keep a track of that. Um, but the point here is that it gives me some information about that type of threat, some analysis that Microsoft have done, um, the, the mitigations that can be put in place, the detection details, so how we detect that, how we can look at that in advanced hunting, which we'll get to in a second, and some references. So if I want to get some more information about this particular type of threat, where do I go to to get that information? That's, that's not the best part, though, because I can go to a website that's going to give me information about all of those types of, of threats out there, right? There's, I'm sure there's a number of security sites that present that information. What's of, of value here? is this concept of machines with alerts over on the right hand side. So this is a specific view of the machines that I'm looking at in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection in my environment. 
So for this particular threat, the, the malware delivery using ISOs, um, how many machines with alerts do I have? What's the mitigation status in my environment? So I have three machines that are already mitigated. I've already applied patches to those machines to mitigate that threat so that I know if someone comes and asks me about that threat and I've got that threat in my list, I can tell them immediately how we're tracking and I know where to focus. If there are machines that, or computers that require mitigation, I know where to focus my efforts to make sure that we are protected against that threat if it's something that is, is critical um, for us to avoid. So I just love the way that that information is presented and how easy it is. So around uh, Ignite 2018, uh, or shortly after Ignite 2018 in Orlando, uh, Microsoft introduced in, in WDATP uh, the concept of incidents. Uh, so this, the whole point here is to try and limit the amount of alerts. So if I have a look at the security operations dashboard, I'll see that I have 13 alerts, uh, 10 that are meeting priority, three that are low priority but my incidents have correlated that into three individual inc incidents. So this, the whole purpose here is to make this easier for anyone investigating um, alerts or investigating uh, malware in the environment to try and target that into correlated events as opposed to investigating each individual alert separately. And what I can do if I click on uh, this document exploit incident here is I can see some information about that, that incident. Um, I can go ahead and open the incident page. I can assign that to, to me and do some other stuff around there from a process management point of view. Um, I can then go and look at the individual alerts for that incident and investigate those if I'd like to. So in this case, you know, if I wanna have a look at PowerShell dropped a suspicious file on the machine, I get some uh, detail about that, when it happened, uh, were there any investigation details, the machines and users, um, that we're using the computer at the, at the time. So I can get some, some pretty decent information there about what happened. And if I want to investigate that even further, then I can click on that to open the alert in the alerts page. One of the things I love about the alerts page is that it gives me not only some great information here about the actions available to me, so I can go ahead and um, do, do some other things. If there was a, a file there, if we were looking at a file, I'd be able to actually block that file from running in my environment until I was happy that, you know, that, that might have been a benign file or that there was there was no threat. Um, or if it was a threat, then every machine in my environment will then not execute that file if it comes across it. But it also gives me some recommended actions here, also a description of, of what has occurred, but some recommended actions, which is really useful uh, when you're trying to determine what to do to make sure that you've mitigated that threat. I also love the alert process tree. So the information you get here is incredibly rich. You get an idea of what's actually happened and the time frame in which it has happened. So that I can see in this case, um, you know, starting down here at, um, we want to go right up to the top to the NTOS kernel, but starting down here at explorer.exe, uh, we opened WinWord, WinWord opened this RS4 WinATP intro in voice docm. This is actually one of the walkthrough documents that WDATP provides so that you can test out the environment. Uh, if you don't want to put, and I certainly don't recommend that you put a live or known virus or malware um, on your on your system. If, if it's a completely isolated test environment, then you might want to do that. Something you're going to blow away if you really want to test WDATP. But in most cases, um, the the walkthroughs that the, the team provide are fantastic in validating and uh, the way that it will res that WDATP responds to malware, as well as giving you the ability to actually go through and view the, the types of information that you'll get to be able to dig and get familiar with that. So we can see there, we we, uh, we launched that docm, which then launched some PowerShell, dropped a file there, w, uh, winatp intro backdoor.exe, and then added some things to schedule tasks. Um, there's also a bunch of other things that kind of happened around Word as well that we could look into. So we can click on that PowerShell there, and we can see, okay, well, what actually happened in the execution details? Um, so we, we can see that the PowerShell was run and look, we've, we've got some PowerShell commands here that they, they might be normal by themselves, but when I inject, you know, that string of information into PowerShell, you know, that's, that's not a normal PowerShell command that someone's going to do. Um, and so that can also help me to determine, um, along with whatever WDATP is alerting me to, um, that this may be um, malicious activity. 
either that or someone's done some pretty funky coding. Um, so from there, I can also click into that executable and have a look at some detail on that executable. What is the, the SHA, the MD5 hash? If, is it something that is signed? Is it something that is unsigned? Um, this is what I was talking about before. When I'm looking at a file, I can go ahead and stop and quarantine that file or I can block that file. I can also do what's called submit a deep analysis request. And I love this functionality. This goes and sends that file up to Microsoft. If in my settings I've, I've uh, allowed this capability and it goes and detonates that file in, a, in an environment at Microsoft. And then it comes back and tells me everything that an executable does. So registry settings, you know, shortcuts that are dropped, things that it added to startup files that it modified, whatever, whatever that executable did, but a complete breakdown of everything um, that that file is doing, which is pretty powerful. Um, I, I love that feature. And it also gives me an indication of other things that I might need to do in, in my environment to, to either protect um, or to, to stop that alert, you know, stop that event from occurring on other machines in my environment if I stop access to particular websites or something. Uh, but we'll see more of that um, a little bit later. Um, and then it also gives me an indication uh, down here on the timeline, um, sorry, prevalence of machines is pretty important. So how many machines am I seeing this on? Um, and, and the file names observed and, and in the time that it's occurred in, that's also important when you're, you're looking at uh, malware. Uh, what I didn't mention up the top here, which is pretty important is the prevalence worldwide um, and also the malware detection in virus total. So those are things that can help me determine uh, is, is this uh, file malicious or is this behavior malicious um, or is it something that is benign? So very handy, great, uh, great feature. So moving on to automated investigations and I referenced automated investigations when we looked at uh, incidents before. The purpose of automated investigations and if you liken this to antivirus of something like 20 years ago, when we first started using it, we were a little bit wary of how AV detected um, you know, that something had a virus and, and, and deleted that a file that it thought had a virus that might have been a false positive. So automated investigations is that same concept of, hey, we've got some behavioral of, um, analysis from WDATP. Is it an actual uh, malicious uh, executable, malicious behavior on my machine? Or is it something that's benign? Do I want WDATP to automatically do some of that uh, that remediation or do I want to have some manual intervention? So it's that concept there of, and there are levels in the settings of, of how I address that. So in this case, I, I had automated investigations turned on to request my intervention before I went ahead and let it do the action that it wanted to do. Um, and that's showing up in automated investigations. So if I click on that automated investigation, uh, it gives me a, an automated investigation graph that tells me everything that it did as part of that automated investigation. Now, what I love about this is it's gone and it's looked at 2,616 files, 98 processes, 260 services, 390 drivers, three IP addresses, 261 persistent methods to come up with a determination as to what it needs to do. Now, if I was doing that, um, there might be some people out there that are a little bit quicker than me, but that's, that's gonna take me some time. So the automated investigation has gone through all of that and made a determination as to what it needs to do. So it found two threats and you can see a little pause symbol here where my mouse is. Uh, it waited for 22 hours and 48 minutes. So that was me. Um, it was waiting for me for 22 hours and 48 minutes to go and say, yep, go ahead and remediate this machine. So I got a notification, um, but I needed to go ahead and do that. And so you can see my total time there um, is skewed by that because it waited for almost 23 hours for me to go and click a button. If you enable automated investigation, you know, within a certain period of time, probably in this case, less than an hour, that remediation would have taken place on that machine, um, you know, provided the machine was on and, and communicating with the, the WDATP service. But this is uh, the, the, just a wealth of information. I can click into those 2,616 files to see what it actually investigated to come up with that. So I can also go ahead and do some, um, some digging myself to make sure I'm happy with the, the remediation that was done. And am I happy to then reintroduce that machine back into the environment? Which is one of the things I didn't mention before uh, when I was talking about some of those uh, functions that you can do with uh, WDATP and blocking files. Um, 
but you can also block communication from a machine to everything else except WDATP if you have something that is is pretty critical that you don't want to spread, uh, don't want malware to spread in your environment. So if it's a known a known issue, um, you can block that machine's communication uh, with the rest of your environment to limit the impact while you're investigating that machine through WDATP. So some pretty powerful capabilities here uh, in the software. So that's what I wanted to run through with you in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection today. I hope it was valuable for you. There's a lot more that I could go in depth about from a security point of view with WDATP. This is a product that's continually getting worked on, continually getting updated. There's a lot of integration with the other Microsoft 365 components in the security.microsoft.com uh, site that you'll see. The more components you have, uh, the more information it will feed into that. And that makes it easier when you're determining uh, how impacting a threat is and how to react to, to that within your environment. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you again soon.